नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बी बिगिनिंग विद द थर्ड मॉड्यूल ऑन आवर कोर्स कॉल सेल्स मैनेजमेंट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी विल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द सेल्स डिपार्टमेंट रिलेशन्स वी विल ऑल्सो बी टॉकिंग अबाउट प्लानिंग सेल फोरकास्टिंग एंड बजेटिंग Uh, this particular module in five uh, lectures uh, shall be covering these two broad topics in the first two lectures we will be talking about the sales department relations uh, within the marketing function and outside uh, the uh, with uh, with other functions we shall also be talking about the relationship with other stakeholders and in the subsequent three sessions we will be talking about uh, sales forecasting um, budgeting say and planning so uh, let us first begin with this particular lecture where we will be talking about uh, the interdepartmental relationships and coordination uh, the importance of that the relevance of that then we will be speaking about uh, personal selling and other marketing activities uh, thereafter personal selling and other departments the relationships between uh, the personal sales force and uh, the manner in which they have to coordinate with other departments and then we'll be speaking about the relevance of uh, sales departments relationship with other outside stakeholders so this is what we will be covering in this particular chapter okay so uh, let us start with the basics of the sales department relations now the sales department as we have discussed earlier it, it occupies a, a, a very important uh, you know position because of Uh, the very fact that it it brings in sales and revenue for the organization it brings profit it leads to market share so the sales department occupies a place of immense importance in the organization and uh, the the, uh, the the very fact that uh, say the people in the sales department or the sales force uh, uh, you know is is uh, is responsible for attaining profits or for say revenue for the organization and the very fact that uh, they maintain relations with outside entities with outside stakeholders uh, gives them more uh, gives them a very important role now manufacturing uh, goods and services and you know at uh, At, at 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 competitive prices does not uh, you know suffice for an organization it is not a stand alone function as well it involves a huge amount of coordination between other departments like finance hr purchase uh, you know R&D and very importantly marketing and sales so stand alone the production function stand alone the production and operations department would not be able to do anything it definitely needs to work and coordinate with other departments in the organization and it has a it, it, the, the relationship or the interdependence between the marketing and the sales function and the manufacturing and the operations function is extremely important so uh, also it is not just relationships within the department which are relevant it's also important that the sales um, organization or the sales department uh, you know forms relationships with people outside the organization so relationships within an within an organization are relevant they are highly important but outside relationships are also extremely important as they would uh, help Uh, achieve the objectives of the organization and they would also help determine the reputation of the company so in you know in those companies where they do not have a uh, you know a public relations department or in or or where in organizations which are small and where uh, you know uh, the public relations itself is managed by uh, by, by uh, you know by the the company without a big full fledged department in those cases it is actually the responsibility of the sales people to develop uh, relationships to build relationships and uh, build a good name for the organization of course wherever there is a pr department or a public relations department there as well uh, the sales department must coordinate with the public relations department uh, and they must work in conjunction to each other to achieve goodwill for the organization reputation for the organization now let us first come to interdepartmental relationships any organization will only flourish when activities of all the different departments are coordinated in we all know that in an organization there are different functional areas there are different departments but all these departments must work together for achievement of organizational goals and objectives if an organization wants to sell products if it wants to earn revenues profits market shares it must work you know the production and operations department has to work in conjunction with finance 
purchase, HR, marketing, sales, R&D. So, uh, you know, the organization will only be able to flourish, will only be able to attain its objectives when all the activities of the various departments are coordinated. The heads of the department are required not only to achieve their own objectives or targets, but they must harmonize uh, their activities with other departments, with other heads of the departments for achievement of the overall organizational objective. So, for example, let us take, uh, you know, the uh, the R and D. Now the R and D works in close, uh, you know, re coordination with both the marketing and sales as well as with the uh, production and operations department. The sales people get relevant feedback for uh, for uh, the. Uh, R&D for with respect to existing products. The sales people also bring in, uh, you know, information about marketing trends, about needs, wants, preferences, about competitive strategies to uh, and competitive products to the R&D. And then the R&D must design a product or service offering. And then, of course, it has to, uh, you know, gel well with the existing technologies. Uh, you know, or uh, the machinery or the automation uh, with the R and with with the operations and production. Now, if in case uh, certain designs uh, which are proposed by R and D cannot be given a final shape as a product by the op by the production and operations department, then either the production and operation department must you know, uh, import technology or it must uh, update its uh, production facilities, uh, you know, so that uh, the, the, the idea uh, can be given a full shape. So, similarly, what would the sales department do when funds for promotional campaigns are not timely provided by the finance department? So, a product may be ready uh, by the production and operations de department. It may have been designed by R and D, given shape and form by the, uh, by, by the operations and production people, but until and unless uh, there are funds available for promotional activities, for uh, you know uh, uh, publicity and public relations, uh, for advertising, etc. What would the say? How would the sales department work? Because the sales department, uh, who is which is in charge of uh, you know getting sales, would definitely want the the segment to be informed, to be well aware of the product. So so they all have to work in uh, together. It is uh, the the marketing and the sales and the R and D and the production and operations and the uh, the ad, 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 you know the the head promotion within the marketing team uh, pricing so everything the head pricing so everything uh, has to go um, you know in relation to each other both within the marketing department in and in sales as well as with other departments in the organization so all uh, departments in an organization are interrelated whether it is r and d and production and operations and marketing and sales and within marketing again uh, you know the head promotion and the head are in market research and the head sales and the head uh, you know product management or brand um, uh, you know manager or in charge of the pricing strategies all of them have to work together and any change in any department whether across departments or within the marketing department itself has repercussions on others and so interdepartmental coordination interdepartmental relationships are extremely crucial now uh, what are the methods of coordination uh, we, we may define the methods of coordination in two uh, one are formal coordination methods and the second are informal coordination methods the formal coordination methods are those where a conscious attempt is made to coordinate the activities of the different departments and uh, the clear cut policies, guidelines, procedures are set in and uh, people uh, follow these and the, the, chan the, the, the channel is very formal and uh, clearly well, out, well laid out. There are a uh, lot of things are standardized and procedures are well in place. But in the case of informal methods, we see that uh, it may not always follow a structured pattern. Much depends on uh, issues with respect to quick decision making, uh, time available in hand, resources available in hand. And uh, so informally, at, you know, the managers or the, uh, you know, the heads of departments may coordinate with each other and arrive at, uh, you know, day to day uh, issue day to day decisions. So, uh, while maybe long term decisions uh, require uh, where, where we where there, there are there are huge uh, you know risks involved and where a lot of planning and deliberation a lot of thinking is required in those cases um, you know 
the formal coordination methods help but in the case in cases where quick decision make, making is required it's a crisis situation and uh, quick decision needs to be taken there's not much time available in hand in those cases the managers of the dif or the different heads of the department uh, on their own personal uh, relationships very informally uh, take decisions and coordinate with each other so let us go into it a little more in detail now formal uh, coordination in an organization can be achieved by uh, grouping uh, the various related activities and having you know clubbing them or under one position which could be a high ranking executive who who is in charge of those activities and ensures that uh, there there is coordination amongst the people looking after different activities and or different uh, heads of the department say for example and then uh, there could be another uh, way where if they appoint administrative officers for example general managers who take care of different functions who take care of different activities and coordinate with each other again clear cut policies procedures are laid out it's very very structured Another uh, way in which formal coordination may be achieved is by forming coordinating committees in the organization. So, when you form such coordinating committees, their roles and is actually the role and responsibility to, to coordinate the activities of different departments and uh, different activity heads. So, uh, if you see, uh, because it, it is you know either grouping or appointing or forming, so we see they're very very. It's a conscious attempt that is made to 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 uh, you know coordinate. things and so these are formal methods uh, very clear cut guidelines very clear cut rules regulations policies procedures which people follow which departmental heads follow which activity heads follow and uh, coordination is achieved both within the organization and outside the organization um outside the organization with the stakeholders uh, when we talk about informal methods as i said it is there is no conscious attempt made to towards coordination it is very informal uh, you know and people in the activity heads the branch heads or the department heads they coordinate with each other build relationships which are uh, you know trustworthy relationships uh, sometimes people who are at good terms with each other also uh, act as information centers and um, they they act as you know they act as people who collect information who share information disseminate information with each other and they play a key role in coordinating activities very informally there is no formal channel here there is no formal code of conduct here it is actually very very informal uh, how they do it uh, now uh, the, for example the top sales and advertising executives might serve as joint uh, communication partners and they may say that yes all activities including personal selling advertising or sales promotion packaging merchandising would be handled to together so so in this way they coordinate their activities also uh, for example a new product uh, is being launched in the in a particular territory there again the you know uh, it may take time till formal approvals are actually obtained so in such cases uh, you know the 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 head uh, sales and the head um, advertising and promotion may uh, oh, oh, you know agree to come up with a short term plan and uh, you know start the process till formal mechanisms uh, you know or formalization of the policies uh, or of the you know plans are made so till formal plans are made they would actually bring in something informal so that the uh, the promotional activities can start well in head in time and before the product is launched and 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 uh, you know there can be a benefit for the organization there can be a synergistic benefit so what we are talking of is that most in most cases these informal coordinating methods prove very useful uh, when quick decisions are take have to be taken or there is shortage of time and uh, because the activity heads or the department heads uh, uh, trust each other or rely on each other uh, you know they they take these joint decisions keeping very well in mind that it it is of mutual ben mutually benefits both of them and ultimately it would affect the um, organization so such informal coordinating methods by various department heads are always taken uh, with this uh, you know um, aim with, with this objective that it would be a synergy it would be a mutually ben beneficial for both for for all the parties or, or for the various departments uh, who are taking such uh, you know uh, informal uh, co coordinating methods who are adopting such informal coordinating methods and it would be helpful for uh, for all of them
So, uh, you know, so that is why we say that informal methods of coordination are regarded to be much more important, much more, uh, much better. Um, uh, inform they work when there is an urgency uh, and there is a paucity of time uh, or in conditions where frequent communication is needed. And as, com as in contrast to formal solutions, informal solutions many times were tentative in nature. And as we said, they are, in it, they are uh, you know, used. Uh, things are decided policy you know informally and these are given a formal shape later on after uh, you know set, after a, set, uh, a review is done and uh, of course uh, the the arrangement which is agreed to upon these uh, department heads in an informal manner uh, are are scrutinized are evaluated are given a formal yes after a review process but in the short run they are the ball is set rolling so that both in the various various departments can actually help each other. So, uh, the any and every um, you know method which is used informally uh, is something which is uh, short term and needs to be evaluated, examined, re-examined by the other people by the other you know by, through formal means and if uh, they are found to be suitable uh, they are they, they are agreed upon in an informal manner. In else, if uh, you know these need to be uh, revised or reviewed, a modification is done to the informally agreed, um, you know, policy, and then after subsequent revision, these are adopted. So informal solutions work as tentative solutions. Uh, they help in crisis management or they help in situations where quick decisions need to be taken. And after uh, while the ball is set rolling, they are, um, you know. Subject to review, they are adopted or they are modified, and then they are finally adopted as a formal, um, uh, you know, shape. So um, now there are certain problems associated with informal methods. Also, one is uh, it could actually it requires relationships built on trust. So here, because it is highly informal, there is nothing written, and uh, you know, a decision is agreed upon by the department heads or by the activity heads. Which, which is implemented. Now, this kind of an arrangement has to be built on trust, has to be built on relay, you know, very if confidence on each other, which sometimes is difficult, especially when there are issues with respect to the line and staff or there are with issues with respect to, you know, ego and personality clashes. Also, it could promote organizational politics because there is no official document it can lead to problems uh, these are they, they can be misunderstood uh, people can you know uh, misunderstand them and uh, the hence for the implementation becomes faulty also those involved in you know uh, you know in such using such informal methods must be in close coordination with each other uh, they must understand each other's uh, positions, different activity heads and department heads must understand each other's positions, they must empathize with each other and only then a fruitful, uh, a, you know, uh, exchange, an exchange could be fruitful, but that is that seldom happens. Also those involved in formal exchanges must involve, must, must understand the roles and responsibilities of others involved in the exchanges. So, uh, because of this, uh, there could be problems. Another problem which can happen with informal methods is that it, it requires a climate that allows free exchange of ideas. There should be transparency in communication. People should not hide things from each other. And uh, because this, and so this requires huge amount of trust. Um, till they are formalized, till they are given an official, you know, till there is a uh, official documentation, uh, you know, uh, there could be problems. And so, informal methods may be used, but they are not without weaknesses. Uh, in certain cases, uh, there are people who have a lot of say and go ahead doing things informally agreed upon. Uh, later, they could back out when there is a problem or when there is an issue. So, people would not like to take responsibility uh, and, and also this could lead to uh, organizational politics, especially if there are few who are very powerful and uh, take a stand and do not let others talk or do not let others share uh, information and uh, do not let others freely exchange ideas. So, in these cases they could what could develop would be a power center and there could be problems within the organization. Now, um, let us come to coordination of personal selling with other marketing activities. So, uh, we will be talking about uh, the coordination of personal selling with advertising, with marketing information, with services and with logistics. 
So, let us first start with coordination of personal selling with advertising. Now, the objective of both sales and advertising is basically to, in, to, to educate the customer, persuade the customer to buy and uh, to, to so, so what you are talking of to create demand and so what these depart departments aim at is increased demand from the segments. So, the sales department actually uses personal selling uh, techniques, we have discussed earlier how the sales department or how salesmanship relates to personal selling and the advertisement department thrives on per non personal selling techniques, so both help each other. Sales department is more into face to face, advertising is, is actually non personal. So, the sales department thrives on personal selling techniques and advertising thrives on non personal selling techniques, both help each other, both assist each other in, in their efforts and formal coordination is required. Formal coordination is best achieved when the heads of the sales and the heads of the advertising coordinate with uh, each other and they report to the same boss or to the same executive. So, that they, so, so, in this way what happens is that both the sales and the advertising go hand in hand in glove and help each other, while the advertisements help educate inform the customer the final push uh, for the sale of closing of the sale or the final persuasive uh, you know effort comes from the sales people. The sales people persuade the, the customers to buy or the prospective customers to buy and um, of the advertisement informs them or makes them aware. Of course, the role played by the advertisement department or the advertising department is much stronger in the case of B 2 C. However, the, their importance even in the B 2 B is it cannot be undermined. Both help each other uh, and both should move hand in glove to be able to uh, help each other uh, achieve the objectives. Uh, sales department also assists the adver advertisement department in designing advertisements which can better uh, you know persuade the customers to buy products. Sales department understands the segment very well, they would be able to communicate to the advertisement department to decide uh, you know to, 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 to uh, and be able to give inputs to them with respect to the, uh, the what uh, the message to be conveyed uh, or, the, or the message strategy or even the uh, executional framework and the creative strategy which means what is to be said and how it is to be said and also about uh, the message source or the credibility of the source. The advertising effort supplements the efforts by the sales people in promoting sales. As we said the advertising pro department uh, or informs the customers, remi keeps reminding them the objective of the advertisement department could be cognitive, effective and behavioral. It could be cognitive to educate the customers about the product about the brand, about attributes, benefits, features, prices, it could be effective which is trying to create a good feel about the product and about the brand. It could also be behavioral to encourage people to buy or to try and uh, or, or to uh, you know keep buying, so patronizing and repatronizing. And this effort on the part of advertising department to inform, to persuade, to remind the customers or the uh, existing and the prospective customers also helps the sales department. The sales department in the case of uh, B2C, uh, you know, we know it, 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 it relates more to the trade partners or to channel partners. So, uh, the trade partners or the channel partners or the marketing channel members also get benefited out of the advertisements which are broadcast on print or audio visual or other media. And in the case of B2B, the role of advertising may not be very important, but nonetheless it helps inform uh, you know, customers or clients and keep them reminded about the product and about the service. Of course, a major role there is played by the sales people to push the product. Advertising gen department also generates leads for the sales department uh, and helps them uh, for you know uh, perform the function. Now, the sales department also has to work in conjunction with the marketing information department. And every organization has a marketing information department uh, and the marketing information department further uh, is broken into the, um, uh, the, the, uh, in this, the internal information systems as well as the marketing intelligence systems and the marketing research system. So, the information provided by the marketing information department can be used uh, by the sales department for identifying leads, it can also be used by them to study uh, you know the the um trends etc. Now, let us talk a little bit more about the marketing information system. The marketing information system helps study the macro and the micro environment. It is a more major role to study uh, what is happening in the environment or in the marketing environment and what 
our current trends on what would be the future trends and how things would change in future. So, this information is actually collected by the marketing information system through its different, uh, you know, the, through the different elements it comprises, be it the internal information system, which involves, which includes the order to payment cycle and this inventory in the sales uh, system, sales analysis, or it could be the marketing intelligence system, which helps. Uh, collect day to day uh, information or it helps collect information about day to day developments in the market or it is the market research system uh, where uh, the, the our responsibility is to uh, you know to, uh, to, to study the environment, analyze the environment, uh, you know identify opportunities, threats, uh, see how the strengths can be used to take advantage of the opportunities and fight the threats. So, the marketing information system keeps the sales people where you know informed and where about what is happening, but lot of this input also comes from the sales people in the form of feedback. So, the sales people provide information to the marketing information system as well and the marketing information system through their analysis of the information provided by the sales department through their information through their through a specialized role played by the marketing research system. Or helps the sales people forecast sales, decide on the sales potential etcetera. So, information provide both both are information providers and receivers for each other. The marketing information system receives feedback from the sales, the sales and, and information about uh, they also receive information about the, the current trends or the developments in the market and um, they use this information to analyze this information. To, to provide vital inputs in the form of sales forecast or sales potential to the uh, sales team. Also, the market research team may uh, analyze a problem being faced by the sales team and give solutions, uh, f f you know, for, f to this problem. So, both help each other, the sales department and the marketing information department help each other um, and the information provided by the marketing information department can be used. Uh, by the sales department for identifying leads. Also, the marketing information department assists the sales department by gathering data for analyzing prop sales problems and sales potential. So, both help each other. The sales department as we said in, uh, provides the raw data to the marketing information system or the marketing information department and the marketing information department may offer insights to the sales department for making appropriate decisions on the sales efforts depending upon the demand analysis, depending upon the cost factor and uh, the sales department may also provide a pro, you know, inf insights to the sales team with respect to sales potential or sales forecast in a particular uh, you know region or in a particular you know country or in a particular market segment so forth. So, they both help each other. Now, as, as I said the marketing information system here will not only be dealing with information within in terms of order to payment cycles and sales information systems uh, that is uh, uh, you know uh, the when were the orders placed, when were the things delivered and when were uh, when was in when were re payments received, but it will also talk about uh, the how the sales team must uh, you know uh, push put in efforts to towards selling and non selling activities so that uh, the the organization can benefit also uh, the marketing intelligence system and the marketing information system will talk about the happenings and the future while the marketing intelligence system will talk about happenings data what is currently happening the marketing research system would provide solutions to future problems or to current problems and how they are to be handled so this information from the marketing information system from the sales information internally and the order to payment cycle plus the marketing intelligence system and the marketing research system will provide a lot of help will provide a lot of inputs to the sales team. Sales team also would provide raw data uh, in the form of what is happening outside the current trends, challenges, uh, competitive uh, strategies as well as competitive offerings as well as they would also give inputs uh, with respect to customer feedback. So, that this can be used by uh, this information can be analyzed and used by the marketing information uh, marketing information system to further uh, you know you to, to, to distribute to 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 the r and d or to the production and operations activity heads and to the others so they all work in coordination with each other 
Coming to sales and service, now in many companies which, are B, which deal with B2B typically and manufacture technical products, service is very important. Even in the case of B2C scenario, the after sales is a very important factor that is taken into consideration by customers when they decide to patronize a brand or re-patronize a brand. So in fact, service today is, uh, the, is what gives a, com the, a company a competitive edge and it is that many times it is presented as an important sales strategy. So the sales and services department must work in coordination with each other and uh, it is very, it's, it would be an ideal situation if they are located in the same location and they work hand in glove. They, today because of uh, the again because of the information systems, uh, customer complaints, customer feedback uh, can, uh, can be tackled real time. Uh, companies have their toll free numbers, they have their websites, they have their sales people who can be contacted online and these people uh, you know would immediately refer the problem to the service center or the service people and uh, so the customer complaint or the customer problems uh, would be handled immediately. It is very, very important today uh, in today's competitive era that customer complaints are addressed as quickly as possible so that uh, you know uh, customers feel yes they are being cared for, they are being heard and in case they have a problem there is somebody to look after uh, their problems. Um, the service people must play a very important role because they are highly responsible to create satisfied customers and a need, a clo a need for a close coordination is, is a must, is it imperative for creating a satisfied customer base to create a loyal customer base. Uh, then we come to sales and logistics. Now, we all know the prime objective of logistics is to ensure that customers get the right product at the right place at the right time and uh, logistics fosters selling by making sure that product reach the prospective customers on time. Now, whether it is the B2B or whether it is the B2C, uh, you know, it is very important that companies actually adhere to this logistic principle of making the right things available to the right people at the right place at the right time. So, logistics supplements the efforts made by the sales department because the sales from department would be able to close a sale especially in the case of B2B or secure orders from channel partners in B2C, but the ultimate delivery uh, of the same depends upon the logistics. So, important issues here are with respect to packaging, order processing, inventory management, warehousing, transportation because all of this uh, accounts for optimize, all of this would mean uh, op cost optimization. If they are if packaging, order processing, inventory management, transportation, warehousing and logistics are uh, decisions with respect to these are taken carefully, it would lead to optimization of resources, of cost, of time and help uh, secure huge profits uh, for the company. It would also be uh, you know able to generate a, uh, a, a loyal customer base, a satisfied customer base and that is why it is very essential that things are made available at the right time, at the right place, at the right cost and because we are talking of the right cost, in optimization uh, is important and decisions with respect to inventory management, order processing, transportation, warehousing, logistics are extremely crucial. They have to be taken keeping in mind uh, this, uh, the cost, keeping in mind the demand in the market, keeping in mind the 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 uh, potential sales or the you know, orders secured by the salespeople. So, the sales and logistics must work together. Now, this brings us to an end of the first lecture on the third module of the course. Uh, I hope you have found it beneficial. Uh, the references, uh, we have still Kandif, Govoni and uh, Puri, Sales and Distribution Management, 6th uh, edition 2017, Pearson India Education Services. Thank you.